Hi guys, it's Shell Sunbury Housewives. Welcome back to another video. If you're new to our channel, thank you so much for stopping by and we would love it if you would hit that subscribe button. In today's video, I am making a mermaid scale tumbler. So I am using a sublimation tumbler that I messed up on and I found this project to be perfect to reuse it for. I can't speak tonight, sorry. So I'm starting out using double-sided tape and I'm going to, um, I can't think, I'm so sorry. I'm gonna take my double-sided tape and I'm gonna wrap it all the way around the entire tumbler, strip by strip. You'll see what I'm doing here. But I'm just starting at the top and I'm wrapping it all the way around once I get to the other side, then I'm just gonna cut it off. And then I will go right underneath that piece of tape and do the same thing. And I'll continue to do that until I get all the way down to the bottom of the tumbler. So now what do I do here is I'm removing the backing of the double-sided tape and I'll use and I will remove a couple rows here at a time to begin with and what I did was I cut out a mermaid scale out of cardstock using my silhouette and I connected the um, scales so that I just had a strip because I'm lazy and didn't want to connect or attach them one at a time yeah I know but the only thing I wish I had done different was that I had taken the scales um, to just the bottom lip of the tumbler instead of the overhang so that I didn't have to cut them off but live and learn so I'm going to continue and remove the next strip off here you can do it you can do it there you go and then I'll take the next strip and offset it in between the bottom row and make sure that I press it down and wrap it around. And make sure that you can do it. This has to be frustrating for you to watch. I know I'm frustrated. So I'm going to continue to do this all the way around. Make sure that I press it down and attach the cardstock to the double-sided tape. And I'm going to do this all the way up the tumbler. Anywhere that you see that might not be completely covered is perfectly fine. Um, that will get covered up later with um, a treatment that we do. You'll see.
Right here, I noticed that I just dumped something right into a project I was working on. Had to fix it real quick. That was lovely. The crafter's life. So I'm going to continue and finish this last row. And I'm smoothing everything down. And I'm going to bend over the top of the scales just to make sure that I get a really good top um, adhesion. Ad okay, speak. A good adhesion at the top. And I'm smoothing all of these scales down to make sure that that cardstock really sticks. Once I make sure that that's all sticking, then I'm going to turn it over and make sure that the bottom as well, just bend those over. Right there, I'm showing you the, the little spot that wasn't covered, no big deal, it'll get covered. And then I'm going to take my scissors and just trim off the bottom. Right here is where I said, I wish that I had just taken the scales at the very bottom instead of having to cut those, but it all works out. So I'm going to pull those back up and then I'm going to trim off the top as well. Because this is cardstock, you want to make sure that you seal this really good. So I'm going to be actually putting about three coats of Mod Podge over this cardstock. If I were to put a epoxy right over cardstock, it would soak it up and ruin this project. So I do do about three coats. I do one coat of Mod Podge, let it dry, a second coat of Mod Podge, let it dry, and then a third coat and let it dry. Once that's dry, I do go and I paint um, the cardstock black because it's winter here. I can't just spray paint it. So I'm using my good old trusty Waverly chalk paint in black to make sure that I paint this entire cardstock. Um, I want to make sure I get all the nice little grooves so that there is absolutely no white showing. Um, I did use a little paintbrush to get into those grooves. Once that's done, I'm going to use my Eileen's chest. Eileen's tack it over and over. I put a little bit in a cup and I want to dilute this with a one-to-one -one ratio of tack it over and over and water and mix that up. You want a consistency of Mod Podge and what tack it over and over is it's kind of like Mod Podge but you use it dry. Um, it doesn't completely dry down. It stays tacky hence the name tack it. So I'm going to go ahead and mix this up if I ever get to that point. Um, okay, here I'm mixing it up now. Once I get it mixed up, I'm still mixing. But once, I, once you get this mixed up, some people use it not diluted. I personally like to use it diluted, um, but I paint paint well I guess technically you do paint it um, but I will paint two coats of this tack it over and over onto this the first coat you let it dry it come it, you paint it on there white once it dries clear you know that it's dry and then you'll do a second coat so this is the first coat that I'm painting now
And now I'm going in with my second coat of Tacket. And this just helps to make sure that anywhere I might have missed the first time, that it'll get it the second time. Once I get everything painted on, what I'll do to help it dry is I will use my heat gun to make sure it dries because I am impatient and I want to get this project going. So once I get it all painted on, and don't forget your bottom, then I will use my heat gun to dry it. So I'm going to be using these chameleon powders in a purple blue and blue green and I do also end up adding in a fuchsia color as well. So like I said the tack it over and over um, stays tacky so I'm mixing the purple what was the purple blue and green blue and fuchsia. I mix all the chameleon powders that I'm using. I'm mixing a little bit of each into a medicine cup, which you see me doing now. Very slowly. <laughs> and then I, at this point, I decide to go ahead and add a little bit of fuchsia in as well. I don't know how much of a difference that really made. Here's the fuchsia. And then I'll mix these three different powders together. And then I'll take a makeup brush and I'll just dab it on and then rub this into the Tacket powder or tack it over and over on my tumbler. And then that Tacket since it's tacky, we'll grab onto that mica powder. And it, the chameleon powder has this awesome effect on the black paint. You can kind of see the color shifting right now. It, this camera does not do it justice on how beautiful that these colors truly are. So I go ahead and I just rub this powder all over this tumbler until there's absolutely no tackiness left. Look how beautiful. So I'm just gonna finish that up. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put it on my turner and I'm gonna go ahead and mix up my epoxy. I use the Illumilite Amazing Clear Cast and it's a two part one to one ratio. So I'm gonna use about 20 milliliters of epoxy on this. So it's 10 milliliters of part A and 10 milliliters part B. And Part A is a much thicker um, than Part B is. So here I am with Part A, and then once I get to uh, the 10 milliliter part, then I'll add in the Part B. And then you wanna slowly mix it because you don't want bubbles. So you can watch me mix up the epoxy here.
as you start to mix it, it gets really cloudy, as you can see. Now I'm going to speed it up so you don't sit here and watch me forever mixing it up. Once it's done mixing, it'll go crystal clear. There'll be a little bit of bubbles, but nothing horrible. You always want to make sure to wear nitrile gloves. I added a little bit more of that chameleon powder in there and mixed that in well. And then I'm going to go ahead and clean off my stick. And then I'm going to add my epoxy to the tumbler. This is so satisfying. So now that I got the epoxy on, so I'm going to add some glitter. I'm not going to just dump glitter on it. I decided to add some, this is just some clear white opal chunky glitter and I'm holding it up high so that it just sort of cascades down um, sporadically. Um, and then I noticed that it really didn't show up a whole lot and I wanted a little bit of color. So I pulled out some glitter that I had kind of mixed myself. It had different colors in it. It had uh, some purple and some teal. So I can't give you a name. I don't even know what that other clear was. I'll have to see if I can figure out what that was. And I liked it this much better. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm holding up really high so that it's cascading up kind of like halfway up the tumbler. Um, and it's not even a whole lot of it on it, just enough to kind of give just some pretty prettiness, prettiness, is that a word? It is today. And then I remembered I needed to get the bottom of the tumbler. So I pulled off um, this glitter that I had gotten, I believe, off of Etsy. And it's called Mermaid, I think. 
mermaid galaxy um i'll put that in the description box below and i just put it in my hand and blew it onto the bottom of the tumbler um this made an absolute mess but it ended up turning out absolutely beautiful and then i just sprinkled it onto the bottom of the tumbler and a little bit around the the um, edge of it and then I just started kind of going ham towards the edge of it as well until I got to the desired effect that I wanted So then I just took my torch and popped any bubbles that you may not see. You just want to quickly go over this. You don't want to hold it in one spot. You could burn your epoxy. And look how beautiful this is. I really wish that you could see the different colors that the shift gives you you can kind of see it here with the purple and the blue and the green it's stunning but it there is no justice it could be done from without seeing it in person so i let that spin for 12 hours and once that was done it was time to take it off my turner and time to clean up the rim. I wasn't going to sand it this time because um, there was only one coat of epoxy and I didn't want to sand off any of the glitter. So I'm going to take my craft knife and clean up the rim, take off any epoxy that might have gone over the rim and inside. And you just want to be careful because you don't want to cut yourself. Anything that is inside the tumbler you just want to take your craft knife and just sort of wedge that out of there just like that pull that out and then once I get that done get that one out and then I'm going to wipe this down with rubbing alcohol and then I'll put it on my turner again with another coat of epoxy And here is the third and final coat of epoxy. The second coat I forgot to film, but after the second coat, I sanded any rough spots that were still um, present, wiped it down with S or uh, alcohol, and then put it back on. And now this is my third and final coat. I'm gonna go ahead and put on um, that final coat and then we'll let this spin for um, another 12 hours.
and here it is all finished. I really wish you could see in person the absolute stunning color shifts in this. You can kind of see it here, the difference in lighting and all of that, but it's seeing it in person something totally different. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, I would absolutely invite you to. And I will see you guys in the next video. Have a great day. Bye, guys.